Currently live. Let's see here if this is gonna work. Alrighty, alrighty. <clears throat> Let's make sure we got our mic set up here appropriately. If everyone can hear me, please let me know. Give it a couple minutes, wait for some people to show up, and then we'll go from there. As you guys can tell from the title of today's video, it's going to be about surf fishing 101 and how to get started and all that jazz. You guys got any questions, of course let me know, but go ahead and uh, get started here, 7 o'clock sharp. So what is going on, fishing enthusiasts welcome back to another exciting episode of 904 fishing i'm your host alex today we're going to be looking at and diving into the world of surf fishing for beginners um if you guys wanted to learn how to surf fish you didn't know where to start and uh, you know you want to just kind of wet your feet so to speak this is a great place to do it. this is where we're going to get started so tune in listen up take some notes let's get you uh get you out there and get you catching fish um hey what's going on jack how's it going man uh, so, so we'll, we'll start initially with the basics of surf fishing. What is surf fishing? Surf fishing, every time I say that, people always ask, oh, how do you fish off a surfboard? Or, you know, how do you do that? Is it like a paddle board? Are you doing the intercoastal? No. It's fishing from the beach or a shoreline, predominantly the beach. That's why it's called surf fishing. You're fishing in the surf. Um, so that's why it's called surf fishing. Typically, uh, like I said, done pretty much all over the east coast all over the west coast of florida it's very popular very very fun way of fishing because you never know what you're going to catch you get everything from a whiting to a shark you never know so um start with point number one is going to be know your target which is going to be you know research the local fish species research the local uh the most likely fish you're going to encounter when you go out surf fishing what does that mean that will mean that, you know, if you go out and you've got a bunch of gear and tackle and bait and techniques and stuff for striped bass, that might be popular up in the northeast surf fishing, that's not going to help you down here in Florida if you're going for, you know, pompano or whiting. It's going to be a totally different kind of fishing, so you want to make sure you know your area, you know the fish that you're going for, and you know what, you know, you, what species you're most likely to encounter. Uh, this is going to help you choose the right bait, tackle, and techniques when it comes to surf fishing. If you go ahead and just put in that little bit of research, look up those species of fish, fish you're most likely to encounter. Uh, when it comes to gear, again, basic gear that you want. Anywhere from a 7 to 12 foot rod. For beginners, I recommend a 10 foot rod. You can get a, uh, there's a Daiwa surf rod that you can get at Walmart. I want to say it's like 20 bucks, 23 bucks, something like that. I use that for a long time. It's the rod that I recommend to everybody when they're starting out. It's an inexpensive rod, very good rod. It's a two-piece rod too, so it disconnects. Easy transportation, but very hardy rod, very you know good quality rod that you're going to be able to catch a lot of fish on. I've caught everything from whiting to bull reds to sharks on that rod, so great rod to start out with. Um, you do want to go for the medium to medium heavy action rods um, because you never know what you're going to catch out there. You know, if you get a too light of a rod, there's a chance that it gets snapped if you get a nice sized fish on there. So definitely go for the medium to medium heavy, you know, to, to be able to handle that different variety of different fish and whatnot you're going to get. Um, and then line and leader. So you've got your rod. Now you need to get your line leader reel, of course. So for beginners, I recommend anywhere for the... 3,000 to 5,000 size range. Um, most guys, I'd recommend just going straight down the middle, go for the 4,000 size reel, okay? That's gonna have enough line for you that if you do hook up into a nice fish, you got plenty of line to let it run, or you know, you can cast out as far as you want or as close as you want, but you don't wanna go super small. I see some people uh, you know, use 2,500 size reels when they're fishing in the surf. You absolutely can do that, but just for a good general purpose intro reel, go for a 4,000 size reel. You want anywhere from, you know, 250 to 350 yards of line on there, which is a lot of line, but better safe than sorry, especially if you hook something, you know, a little bigger than what you're expecting. You can loosen that drag and let it run for a little bit. 
Um, it seems like the live feed started late. Back up. Um, oh, yeah. No, we, we've been in here for a little bit now. Um, so all that will be on the recording. We're just going over the bare essentials right now. We're only on the third point. I've got a lot to get into, so no worries there. Um, when it comes to putting the line on the reel, you want to make sure you're using anywhere from... You know, you can go as light as 10 pounds if you know you're going to be going for those smaller fish, for those whiting, sand trout, stuff like that. But when it comes to actually fishing and actually going out for the larger species, personally, I run 15 pound line on all of my reels except for my heavy duty setups. On that, I'm going to use anywhere from 25 to 30 pound mono. I only use mono, I don't use braid when I'm on the surf, just a personal preference. Everyone has their own. If you want to use braid, by all means use braid, just use a comparable you know, size and diameter to it. Because if you go super heavy, because I used to run 50 pound mono on my super heavy reels, but I was finding that I wasn't able to cast it out nearly as well, it wasn't as sensitive, it was just, I was running into a lot of different issues. So it, it's just one of those things with give and take, you're gonna figure out over time what suits you best. I have found that it's between 15, 15 and 25 pound line. Everybody's different. Um, and then of course, you got your rod, you got your reel, you got your line. What about baits? What kind of baits are you gonna use? Uh, here in Northeast Florida, shrimp, sand fleas, uh, cut mullet, especially right now, we got a lot of mullet running through. So those are gonna be the best ones. Obviously live bait is king. If you can throw out live bait, live shrimp, um, even live mullet, really, if you're equipped for that kind of rig, you know, you, you can throw that out on fish finder rig. That'd be very good this time of year. Um, but when it really boils down to it, if you can just get a pack of, you know, frozen shrimp from the bait shop, you know, fresh dead frozen shrimp, cut the heads off, cut the tails off, cut the shrimp in half, and then you'll, you'll want about an inch or so bait for every hook. Hook size is between one aught and two aught, and uh, you guys are good to go. We'll go into that more later, but typically shrimp, you can't go wrong with shrimp. Um, and then if you get a hair and you want to try your hand at artificial surf fishing, which means casting out with a reel, this is different. This is when I would recommend a 25 to 3,000 size reel. But if you want to try your hand at artificial, just casting and reeling, casting and reeling, kind of like, you know, bass fishing in the surf, I recommend spoons or swim baits. Spoons is what I go to if I'm going to be using artificial baits in the surf. Uh, nice big spoon, flashy spoon. You get, I think I get mine on Amazon. It's like a 10 pack for 20 bucks. They're about, you know, yay big, throw them out, good to go. Can't go wrong with that. Um, all right, so number two, uh, point number two is going to be uh, choosing the right spot. So location, location, location. When it comes to surf fishing, there is a right spot and a wrong spot when it comes to surf fishing. And I see a lot of people make this mistake all the time. And I make this mistake all the time when I don't, you know, frequently choose the right spot to go surf fishing or I'm too lazy to move or you know something happens and I thought it was a good spot isn't a good spot and it just ends up biting me in the butt I don't end up catching anything or I don't catch as much as I potentially could have if I was in a better spot so what does that mean what it means is number one you want to be looking for structure obviously any kind of structure is best uh, any kind of jetties piers sandbars troughs anything like that these structures are going to create pockets where bait fish will congregate, which means larger fish will congregate chasing the bait fish, especially when it comes to fishing piers, jetties, docks, stuff like that. If you're off of the beach and there's an old dock out in the water or there's rocks out in the water, like if you're up in, you know, the Mayport area, there, you know, there's a lot of rocks and stuff, definitely want to try to stick closer to those because any kind of structure in the ocean will attract species and fish and ecosystem and all kinds of stuff. So definitely pay attention to that. Try to focus on that as much as you possibly can. If you're just going out to a standard beach, Jack's Beach, Mickler's Beach, St. Augustine, anything like that, you want to be looking for troughs and sandbars. You want to be casting, you know, in the troughs is obviously ideal. You, you don't want it on top of a sandbar because the fish aren't going to be up there. Or the best is going to be a washout or riptide, which is where there's no sandbars, where the sandbars break and all the water is being flushed out into the ocean. Um, if you guys want, you know, there's tons of videos. How to read the beach is what you're going to be looking for there. Um, Chip the sinker guy has excellent videos on this. He's got drone footage on it. it. shows you exactly what to look for and how to read the beach. So definitely go check out his channel. Look at that. Um, you want to be trying to get that trough and that wash out as much as you possibly can. Um, and, you know, sandbars and troughs, they're going to hold a lot of bait because 
within the troughs there's going to be highways of bait fish going up and down up and down up and down mullet whiting croaker spots all kinds of stuff that the predator fish are going to be looking for so if you can get your bait into those troughs and you can drop it down in front of those highways or on the highways you got a higher chance of hooking up especially into whiting bait fish stuff like that or if you've got cup bait or even live bait you know live mullet or spots or something like that you got a higher chance of hooking up into a predator fish so definitely pay attention to that and you don't have to go super super far like i said if you guys read the beach and there's a you know there could be a trough 10 yards off the beach and that's where you should put your bait there could be a trough 20 yards off the beach or 100 yards off the beach it all depends on where you are how the sandbars are located what it's all looking like so definitely pay attention to that like i said if you guys don't know how to do that you don't know how to read the beach go check out uh the sinker guy on youtube uh run by a guy named chip super nice guy he's got a bunch of videos on there uh with drone footage again great great information great stuff to do um number three for this one is going to be tidal changes uh, obviously the fish are going to be more active during tidal changes what does that mean it means that if the tide is raising tide is rising or the tide is lowering the water is going to be moving anytime water is moving that's going to be an opportune time to go fishing if you've got a stagnant tide or a lull in the tide the bait fish night might not be moving as much which means the predator fish aren't going to be moving as much so people swear by the incoming time tide people swear by the outgoing tide personally i just want the water to be moving i have not found super strong evidence one way or the other for incoming or outgoing tide again to each their own so just try to get out there while the tide is moving and you know carrying bait fish and predators and all kinds of stuff so um welcome welcome everyone uh if you guys have any questions definitely leave them down in the comments below and i'll get to them as soon as i can um so segment number three we're going to be talking about casting and retrieving techniques so one of the largest and most often made mistakes that i've seen personally whenever people get into you know surf fishing is they put a big a piece of bait as they possibly can on a biggest hook as they possibly can with the biggest weight they possibly can and they wait out 50 yards and they chunk that bad boy out there as far as they possibly can and wait and like i just talked in the previous segment is you can toss that out there as far as you possibly can but if you toss it on a sandbar very low chance you're going to get a bite you know it's you you don't need a massive amount of bait or weight or hooks or anything like that to catch a large fish i mean my trophy redfish that i caught off of volano beach i caught on a piece of uh, fish bites that was this big on a two-watt hook that was maybe 10 to 15 yards off the beach it was right there so you don't have to throw it super super far um one thing you do need to get in the practice of doing is working on your casting techniques because this isn't like casting a five to seven foot rod bass rod anything like that it's a little different the weight's different you have to throw it a little different otherwise it's either going to go super far to the right super far to the left or straight up so definitely work on your casting when it comes to that so you can really pinpoint where you want to put that weight where you want to put that bait and how you want to present it um and then you know when it, when it comes to throwing your bait out as long as you've got it in a good area it shouldn't take super super long to hook into a fish if it takes more than probably 20 to 30 minutes to hook into a fish either you're in a bad spot you need to change you need to change where you've put your bait where you've you know cast maybe you're on top of a sandbar you don't realize it maybe you're just in a bad location you're at one end or the other try to relocate try to get into a better spot so you have you know a, a better chance more a, a, a bigger advantage to catching fish based on your location where you are on the beach as opposed to where you currently are don't be afraid to pack up and move i'm incredibly awful about this i'm stubborn i don't like to move so once i get to a spot i'm just saying oh i'm here i'm gonna make it work sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't just one of those things um and then if you're going to be doing artificial casting in the beach or in the surf i should say um you don't want to be casting straight out like you would if you're just going to be putting out some bait on like a dropper or like a high low rig um you actually want to try to cast just like you would if you're bass fishing or any other kind of fishing you want to cast along the banks parallel to it so you want to try to get into a trough and then you want to cast all the way down the trough and retrieve in because if the trough is you know a highway 
and you're casting from one end to the other and then reeling in, you're going the whole length of the highway, so you got a much higher chance of catching a predator fish on that artificial bait. Whereas opposed, if, if, if this is the highway and you're casting across the highway and then just pulling it back across, you've only got that much chance to get a bite as opposed to the whole length of the trough. So definitely pay attention to that. I'm not saying you can't cast straight out. You absolutely can. But I would definitely recommend trying to go parallel to the bank as much as you possibly can. Um... And then another mistake that I see people make is they'll cast out a line, they'll sit there and they'll hold the rod. And in 30 seconds, if they don't have a bite, they'll reel it in, reel it in, reel it in, cast it back out, wait, 30 seconds. If they don't have a bite, they'll reel it in. And they'll just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. You gotta be patient. If you know you're in a good spot and you know you are in a good trough and you see fish and there's all kinds of stuff going on, be patient, give it some time. You know, if you wanna give it 15, 20, even 25 minutes, after that, if you don't have a bite, by all means, reel in you know, re refocus your bait and try to go out past that. But if you are only giving it 30 seconds to a minute each time you cast out, that is not enough time. You have to be patient when it comes to surf fishing. You got to give yourself time, especially if you're, if you have shrimp on there, give it, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. But if you've got a big hunk of whiting on there and you're trying to go for something a little larger in the shark category or even large tarpon category, you definitely want to give it time. Now keep an eye on it. If you lose your bait or something's messing with it and then stops messing with it, give it a little bit, check your rig, make sure that you didn't lose your bait. But if you're going for the larger fish, definitely be more patient. Um, and then that'll bring us to the uh, fourth segment, which is going to be the tackling gear breakdown. We briefly talked earlier about rods and reels, hooks, lines, all that stuff. But we're going to go into more depth here. Um, when it comes to rod and reel selection, you're going to want to learn the difference between spinning and casting reels, how to choose the right rod length and power for various fishing situations and targeted species. And that's a big one. We're going to talk about the targeted species here in a little bit. I actually just recently helped a buddy of mine pick out a rod and reel for starting out surf fishing. He didn't want to go for the lighter stuff when it came to like, you know, whiting or spots or croak or something like that. He wanted something a little heavier, something that can handle, you know, some large size fish. So I helped him pick that stuff out. But you definitely want to make sure if you're new to surf fishing, if you're watching this, hopefully you are. If you're new to surf fishing, start with a spinning reel. Go get yourself a nice Daiwa BG in the 4,000, even 5,000 size. I recommend 3,000 to 5,000. If, like I said at the beginning, if you're a beginner, just get a 4,000. Good, decent, quality reel. You'll be able to use it for years and years and years on multiple different occasions. But go get yourself a nice, you know, Daiwa BG. Or if you don't want to spend the money for the Daiwa BG, you can get uh, the Pen Pursuit 3, 4,000. Uh, the Pen Pursuit 3s and onwards are completely sealed through. So what that means is they've got grommets on the inside and rubber on the inside to help prevent salt water and sand from getting into the gears of the reel itself. Uh, now when it comes to reels, don't skimp out too much if the spool on the reel itself, the middle portion of it, which I think I have, yes, so it's a little dusty because I haven't used it in a while, but this is a Daiwa BG right here, right? You guys hear that? It's metal, right? This portion right here, the spool, you want the spool to be metal. If the spool is not metal, the reel is not worth it. Um, so this, this portion right here, if this isn't metal, it's not worth it. Don't get a reel or a rod with a plastic reel. It's just, it's not worth it. It's going to break anyways. Um, so definitely check that out. I don't know how I have that in there, but I'll deal with that later. <laughs> um, now like I said, stay away from casting reels initially to begin with. You guys can get into that a little later. But for right now, if you're getting into it, just focus on the spinning reels. Uh, now, when it comes to terminal tackle, terminal tackle refers to hooks, weights, uh, snap swivels, beads, all that stuff. Everything to make a rig. Um, there's tons of different hooks, weights, swivels, leaders, rigs, pre-made, not pre-made, all that stuff. There's tons of pre-made stuff available to you. If you're just getting into it, don't feel the need to go out and buy all the stuff to make your own if you're just trying to get into it. If you're just getting into it, go buy yourself a high-low rig, which is just a simple, it's got a you know barrel swivel at the top, a little bit of line, one offshoot with a hook, goes a little further down, one offshoot with a hook, a little further down, you got a snap swivel and a barrel at the very bottom, that's where you put your weight. Perfect, just a beginner, 
getting into it. Um, it's usually going to have weights and beads on each hook. That's where you throw your shrimp. It's going to be in the 1 aught to 2 aught circle hook range. Perfect. You don't need anything more than that. Don't go buy the giant shark rigs right off the bat. You're just trying to get into it, just trying to catch a little fish. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when it comes to getting started into surf fishing is they think big hook equals big fish. That's not true at all. Like I said, I caught my bull redfish off the beach on a 2 watt circle hook, which is a relatively small hook. So definitely don't oversize your rigs to start with. Definitely start small, work your way up. Uh, bait and lure variety. So when it comes to different baits, you want to try to take out a couple different baits. Uh, I definitely recommend shrimp. If you can get shrimp, shrimp, sand fleas, or mullet. If you want to be adventurous, you can take all three of them. But something that I always carry with me when I go surf fishing is shrimp and fish bites. Fish bites is an artificial uh, bait that you can put on your hook. It helps keep your bait on there. And it doesn't fall off because it's actually got a biodegradable mesh inside that holds onto the hook really, really well. Hey, what are you doing? Dog decided he wanted to make an intro to the podcast, I guess. Come here. No? Camera shy? You just want to make noise? Okay. So, <laughs> so definitely um, bring a variety of different baits out there because if you bring shrimp out and shrimp's not working, then you're just stuck with shrimp the whole time. Now, one of the things you can do is when you're out at the beach, if you don't have any other bait, you can always look for sand fleas in the surf. You can always find them in the surf. You can even get a sand flea rake if you want to. I know a lot of people that carry those with them. Even if they're not going predominantly for sand fleas that day, they always carry a sand flea rake with them, so they have that option if they want to look for them. If not, you can always dig them up with your hands. Uh, if you guys need to figure out how to do that, you can always Google you know, how to find sand fleas in the surf. It's a very common practice to do with surf fishing. So definitely, you know, and, and if you don't know, you can always ask somebody on the beach, hey, you know, how do I find sand fleas in the surf? I know a lot of people that surf fish and they don't mind being asked questions or even offering help to people that are new when it comes to surf fishing. Um, so, you know, play around, find what you like best, find what works best for you and go from there. Don't just take 100% recommendations from other people when it comes to that kinds of stuff. Um, and then uh, the next category, we're going to be looking at etiquette, surf fishing etiquette. This is one of the things that I think is overlooked when it comes to these how to get started surf fishing videos. Um, there is an etiquette when it comes to surf fishing. I know a lot of people disregard it. I can always tell who is and isn't a native or even experienced surf fisher when it comes to surf fishing based on how they act and what they do when it comes to surf fishing at the beach. When I go surf fishing in the morning, I'm usually one of the first ones out there on the beach. You know, we're, we're talking 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm on the beach getting ready. When I go out, we'll say Mickler's Beach, for example. I walk down the boardwalk to the end of Mickler's Beach. I'm not going to set up right at the end of the boardwalk right where the beach access is from the parking lot to the beach. I'm not going to set up right there because I know everyone and their mother is going to come out and want to go to the beach and they're going to go right there and they're going to want to swim and interact with the beach and do all kinds of stuff. Don't go right off the beach access. If you're going to be fishing, I'm not saying you have to go 200 yards up the beach, but go down, go at least 50 yards to the left or the right from the beach access. Just try to get away from the crowds a little bit. That's going to help. One, no one's going to mess with you. Two, you're going to be away from people causing a commotion. It's going to help your fishing anyway. So don't go right off the beach. Um, definitely be aware of your surroundings when it comes to surf fishing. Currents, rip currents, especially if you're fishing a washout. Definitely pay attention to the tides, to the rip currents, all that kinds of stuff. Um, wear sunscreen. I personally do not wear sunscreen because when it comes to surf fishing, I am clothed head to toe in UV gear. I've got buffs on. I've got gloves on, I've got hats on, I've got a variety of buffs that I wear whenever I do go out surf fishing. So, you know, I've got a whole stack of them right here behind me. You guys can see there, I've got a whole stack of them behind me of buffs and gloves. I've got a wall of hats next to me. I have long sleeve UV shirts, long sleeve UV pants. Definitely something I recommend. I've got surf fishing boots um, that my mom actually bought for me that I wear out whenever I go out now, so that's really nice. So. I don't like wearing sunscreen because the sunscreen can get on the bait and that can affect your fishing. So if you don't want to wear full UV gear, put on sunscreen, simple as that. Um, and just kind of piggybacking off of the other one where it comes uh, to not going directly off the beach access and start fishing. If you get there, let's say you get there late, you woke up late, you didn't want to get out there super early, you're on vacation, whatever. let's say you get out there, you know, 9.30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. 
you walk out there and there's people surf fishing a lot. There's a lot of surf fishers out. You don't want to go within, we'll say, five, ten yards of somebody else that's surf fishing. Um, it's if you have the option not to. If that means you have to walk a little further, hey, just walk a little further. It's not that big of a deal. You're going to give respect to that guy. He's going to acknowledge that. He's going to give you respect for that as well. It's also going to help prevent getting your lines tangled with each other in case there's a strong current. Or one of you hooks a nice fish and it starts, you know, ripping up and down the beach. Just one of those things. It's just courteous and nice. Try to give other people the space that you would want yourself. You don't want to, you know, post up right next to somebody. It's just going to cause a whole variety of issues, you know, down the line that you don't want to deal with. Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You don't want to have to untangle your lines for 20 minutes because you decided to not walk an additional 10 yards down the beach kind of thing. Um, definitely follow regulations when it comes to surf fishing. If you guys are tourists or you're going to an area that you're not familiar with, Look up all the regulations when it comes to surf fishing or fish or size limits, gear limits, stuff like that. In Florida, we have quite a bit of limits when it comes to what you can and cannot fish with. For example, if you're shark fishing, which there is a specific shark shore-based shark fishing permit that you are required to have, if you guys are trying to target shark and you want to shark fish, one of the things, uh, one of the biggest caveats that it has for, oh, you know, this is designated as shark fishing. It means deploying your bait without casting, meaning with a drone or a kayak or paddling it out. Basically, you, you're, you're getting your bait into the water without casting it. That's one of the biggest things that classifies it as shark fishing, and you have to have that permit. Another mistake I see people make all the time is... Our regulations change year to year. Uh, they just changed flounder this year. I know that they changed uh, redfish last year. So definitely keep up with your surf fishing and saltwater regulations when it comes to that kind of measurements because you want to make sure you're not doing it. Because in the past two or three years, I've seen uh, Florida Fishing and Wildlife quite a few times on the beach checking coolers, checking licenses, all kinds of stuff. I've been checked twice now in the past year or year and a half almost, and, you know, prior to that, I've never been checked. So definitely one of those things you want to make sure that you're up to regulation, everything's proper. Um, another thing that I get told all the time is, oh, you've got too many rods, because when I go out, I usually carry four rods with me. In Florida, as my understanding right now, you are allowed to have as many rods as you can handle, meaning if you can only handle one rod or two rods, that's how many you're supposed to have. But there is technically no limit on how many rods you can have. You can have nine rods if you want to. I couldn't handle nine rods. Sometimes four rods is a little much for me. But I know four is that sweet spot, especially if I go out with other people. I want to have, you know, four to six rods so that way everyone can potentially catch something if it comes to it. And we get, you know, a large school that comes through. We get a, you know, nice amount of whiting or bluefish or pompano or something like that. So definitely stay up to all regulations to a current date. If you guys don't have it, download the Fish Rules app. On Apple or Android, that's the app that I use when it comes to surf fishing so that I can keep up with all the current regulations when it comes to surf fishing. So that's what it's called right there, fish rules right there, and it automatically grabs my location. So, um, you know, I, I can show you guys right here. We'll look up red fish right there. Red drum is, you know, officially what it's called, but it's going to give me everything that I need if it wants to focus there you go everything that i need right there so one bag limit 18 inch minimum 27 inch maximum and total length so that's one of those things it might be to the fork it might be to the total length it might be you know it's, it's different for every fish so definitely keep it up again that's called fish rules highly recommend um so that'll cover all of that let's see uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so some troubleshooting and tips that you guys, you know, might encounter for beginners. There's a couple different issues that you'll run into that, you know, I might be able to help you out here right off the bat. So let's dealing with snags. One, let's, let's say you, you snag something on the bottom or you get your rig buried in the sand in a washout or you cast out in a bird nest or something's gone wrong. One thing you want to do is don't freak out, start ripping line out of your reel or start tugging as hard as you possibly can. Take a look at it, slow down, establish, okay, why did I bird's nest or why did I snag or did I hit something or, you know, is there structure underwater, something like that. And sometimes it's ine inevitable. You're going to lose a rig to some rocks, 
that you can't see on the surf and that's just one of those things live and learn move on okay now i know there's rocks there don't cast there or there's you know pylons there don't cast there or if you guys bird nest just try to take your time and undo it as slowly as you possibly can try to follow the line in the spool itself and go from there that applies mostly to casting reels but i've had it had with spinning reels before where people put too much line on the casting or on the spinning reel and then when they cast out the wind catches it and it just unspools from the spinning reel and then you just got line all over the place don't worry about it just try to take it off as best you can you know put your hand around the spool itself pull line off as best you can until it becomes untangled and you've got tension again close your bail and then just slowly reel it in it's just one of those things it's going to happen eventually it happens to everyone it happened to me last time i went fishing and i've been fishing for you know surf fishing for 10 15 years now so um Something I touched on earlier is definitely reading the water. If you go out time and time and time and time and time again and you're just not catching anything or you're getting very small amount of catches or you're just not having good luck, chances are you're not in the right spot when it comes to surf fishing. What does that mean? It means, like I spoke earlier, you're either casting directly on a sandbar or you're just in a bad location and you're just stranding your bait in the middle of nowhere where you know the fish aren't going. So if you guys need to learn how to read the fish, just YouTube how to read the beach. I'm going to be making a video on this shortly, but it's one of those things you need to learn to do and I'm still learning to do even now. It's something that I neglected for a long time and that I was very bad about, but it's one of those skills it takes very, you know, limited effort to learn, but it's something that can help you greatly in the long run. So highly highly recommend you guys do that. Um, weather and season considerations. So every year and, you know, the different seasons, it's going to affect surf fishing as a whole. Um, in the wintertime, you know, especially here in Northeast Florida in the wintertime, we're not going to have as much, we're, we're not going to have as much of some species as we will another but like right now, we've got the mullet coming through. We got the mullet run going on. It's just starting. It started a little while ago. I don't know how a, uh, Hurricane Adalia has affected it, but I know before Hurricane Adalia came through, we had large, uh, huge, huge schools of mullet going up and down the um, coast, and we're going to continue to see that hopefully in the next couple weeks to months. And following that mullet, we're going to be looking at big redfish in the surf. We're going to be looking at big tarpon in the surf, and we're going to be looking at big sharks in the surf. I know once the weather cools down a little bit more, we're going to be looking at more pompano in the surf. Just like in the springtime, in the spring and fall, we've got pompano that come through along the uh, east coast. But like right now, we have a huge population of mullet running through, which is why a lot of people are using mullet in the surf right now. Now, if you go out, one of the things that I recommend you look at is uh, the surf. Look up any surf conditions or surf forecast or anything like that. If it's forecasting, I've hardly ever seen this, but let's say it's forecasting six to nine foot waves off the beach. That is not something you want to be fishing in when it comes to surf fishing, especially if you're getting started. Chances are you're not going to be equipped to handle that. Most of the time here in Northeast Florida, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Huguenot, Mayport area, we're going to be looking in the one to we'll say four foot range, you know, on the higher range of waves when it comes to surf fishing. What's up, Nick? Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, so one of the things, and Nick is one of my surf fishing buddies, he can definitely attest to this. One of the things that we look at is we look at wind. Where's the wind coming from? Because if the wind is coming off of the ocean onto the shore, so if we've got an east to western wind, that means the surf's gonna be really rough, as opposed to if we have a west to eastern wind, that means the surf's gonna be relatively calm because it's gonna be kind of flattening those waves. It's one of those things that you really want to keep an eye on. You want to keep an eye on, is it going to rain that day? You know, is that something I need to be worried about? How bad is the sun going to be? You know, how much UV protection do I need to bring? Are the waves going to be super bad? Is the current going to be super bad? When is high tide? When is low tide? It's just, it's, you want to take all this stuff into consideration when it comes to surf fishing. And like I mentioned before, you definitely want to be fishing moving tide. Some people swear by the incoming tide. Some people swear by the outgoing tide. I just like for the water to be moving as a whole. Um, but yeah, overall, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, even if you're watching this at a later time and date, uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below and I'll definitely get to those as fast as I possibly can. Nick says, I've learned over time about overcasting past the troughs, thinking where I need to be and have gotten skunked. Yes, exactly. That's a classic, classic mistake. And I'm guilty of this a lot as well. 
is I'll try to cast out as far as I can, or I'll cast too far past the trough, and I miss it, and I'll land on a sandbar, and then I just will sit there for a while. I'm thinking, why aren't I getting any fish? So that's definitely something Nick and I have been working on lately, or at least I know I have, and it sounds like Nick has as well, is really learning how to read the beach, reading troughs, reading sandbars. Because, I mean, I've caught fish two yards off the beach, and I see people casting, you know, 45 yards off, trying to catch as big a fish as they possibly can, and they're not getting anything because they're casting too far, and all the fish are right there. So that's definitely something to look at and think about. But um, as we wrap up our beginner surf fishing master class, uh, remember that every cast that you take is a step towards honing your skills, is a step towards connecting with you know, nature as a whole and fishing, which is, you know, everyone that, you know, I think everyone should get out there and try to, you know, connect as much as you possibly can to nature when it comes to that kind of stuff and really hone those skills. And it, it's a great way to relax and just get out there. But, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Stay curious. Keep learning. Uh, follow this as a best you can as a guide for getting out there and really getting started fishing. Hopefully you guys are reeling in those prize catches in no time. Uh, be sure to stay tuned in to 9 to 4 Fishing. I go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I upload a video every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And um, I'm going to be going out and do, trying to do more tutorial and how-to videos when it comes to fishing to, to give you guys you know, insights, tips, and all kinds of tales of adventures for when it comes to fishing. Um, oh, yeah, definitely get your kids out there aunts uncles nieces nephews grandma grandpas everybody brothers sisters get out there get fishing and one of the best things about fishing off the beach is even if you don't catch anything you're still at the beach and having a great time before we go nick says being able to spot rips uh rip currents is what i, I believe he means there is available spot rips is crucial too for being in the right spot on the beach since that's where all the fish will be following around bait yes exactly nick excellent point i mentioned that earlier nick is reiterating it excellent point definitely make sure to do that but uh Thank you guys for tuning in to this live stream of 904 Fishing, and we will see you guys next time, next week, same time, same place.